Blog Talk Radio. Uh, you know what time it is. Time to hang out yeah. with Mr. Cool. With Mr. Koopa. With Mr. Koopa. With Mr. Koopa. Get the latest cool. From Mr. Koopa. From Mr. Koopa. From Mr. Koopa. Hang out with Mr. Cool. With Mr. Koopa. With Mr. Koopa. With Mr. Koopa. Get the latest cool. From Mr. Koopa. From Mr. Koopa. From Mr. Koopa. Welcome to the Bit Scoop with Coop. I'm your host, Coop. Guys, season four is still going strong right now. I um, have a great guest on the show tonight. I'll get into that in one second. But guys, make sure everyone is listening right now. You go check out the website, www.thebitscoopwithcoop.com. Um, check out the Facebook page, The Bit Scoop with Coop. Um, Twitter. Um, if you can't find me, just Google me. The show is all over, guys. Season four, like I said, is still going strong. And today's guest, oh my goodness. She is actually is a well-established star in the movie industry and television industry. She has done a lot. Um, you can catch her on the Amazon show called The Kicks. You can also catch her. Um, she actually starred or actually appeared on Hawaii Five-0. She's also appeared on so many different shows from Beverly Hills 90210. In a guest spot, she actually done Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I can keep naming on and on and on, but no need to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, the one the only Ms. Monica Lacey. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> All right. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. How was your day today? It was great. I like I've been driving oh. all over town, but it's all good. Oh, wow. Oh, gosh. Ran into a lot of traffic? I did. I had to drive, you know, all over town. I went over to uh, Disney Studios for an audition and trying to stay cool. It's super hot outside. <laughs> Very hot. <laughs> well, yes, I'm in North Carolina, so I know exactly what you mean. Uh, the temperature is somewhere close to the hundreds, so yes, oh, I definitely well, feel yeah, you. It's much hotter there. <laughs> oh, yes, it definitely yeah. is. Now, everybody that's listening worldwide, um, just to let you know, like I said, Monica is a very established actress. Um, she's doing big things in the movie industry, big things in the television industry. And, Monica, just to let you know, when people listen to the show um, – they're paying close attention to everything that you're saying. So just to let you know, Monica, on this show, we talk about how you started in your career, your success, mm-hmm. give advice how to actually get into your career, and much more. So, Monica, I got to ask you, um, first and foremost, when did you first realize that you wanted to become an actress? Well, actually, um, Coop, it was kind of by accident. I, um, I had a friend at school and I lived in Orange County, which is like south of Los Angeles. I had a friend at school who did commercials, and of course I wanted to do it. And my sisters and I, you know, I'm an identical triplet. So we're mm-hmm. these triplet girls that went to high school, but we didn't know anybody in Hollywood at all. But we had this one friend who did commercials, and we said, oh, will you tell your agent about us? And he did, and the agent wanted to meet with us. And so we went, and he signed us, and then we started working as triplets and kind of started, and, that's, and then I started kind of working on my own. And then after a while... I decided, hey, I really like this. So I kind of fell into it. I know it sounds weird, but um, <laughs> at first we did our first commercial and our first TV gig. It's kind of like, isn't this hilarious? This is so fun. What a funny one-time thing. And then I just kept going and going and started taking classes and booking more shows and taking more classes and making more connections. And here I am. I'm the only one who's still in the acting business I'm in, as an actress. Wow. Yep. Nice. Very nice. And, you know, that's a good thing, you know, starting at a young age and you're building up yourself to get prepared to where you're at right now. That's really a very interesting start as far as it goes for you and your sisters. Um, big shout outs to your sisters if they're listening right now. So um, you're doing great things. And I just want to commend you ahead of time for continuing to actually keep doing what you're doing in the television industry and the movie industry and everything. Now, Monica, did you have any? Do you have any mentors? You know that's help, that actually helped you out to get to where you're at today. Yes, I would say um, I've had a couple acting teachers that inspired me and make, made me love acting and made me see what there is, what's capable of, of you know what 
that made me see the, and fall in love with acting. And I would say one of my mentors was Larry Moss. He was, he's like a big acting teacher here, and he's written a book. And he mm-hmm. is just a super gifted teacher. And, he, and, and his book has everything in it. I think it's called Living the Life or The Intended Life or something. And he's just super highly respected. And he just took my acting to the next level. And I was so inspired by him that of how much work I could put into it and how much more I could get out of it. Um, and I've had other friends, you know, as I've been in the business, I've had different friends go on and become, that I went to college with, go on and become successful in their own right. And so it's kind of fun because I feel like they're all out there helping me if they can and having different different friends along the way, that way. Um, but I would say that was probably it. And then other friends who just have been plugging along for 30, 40 years that you probably don't know their names, but I know that they're still acting and they're still doing a great job and, I, and they still, their performances still Im- impress me and inspire me and they're still at it. And so that's wow. just my second mentor kind of thing. Nice, nice. Everybody, make sure you go pick up the book if you're trying to actually get into the acting scene. If you want to get into the movie and television industry, make sure you read that book because that's one step forward that's going to actually get you prepared for auditions and get prepared for everything. Um, now, so Monica. Great. There's so many words of wisdom in there. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Nice. <laughs> nice. I like that. I'm going to have to look for that book myself. Um, Because I would love to see what he had to actually say in the book. So that's a great thing right there. Amazing, yeah. Good one. Yes. Now, you've been around so many, I mean, different actors, actresses, producers, managers. You've been around them all from the days of Beverly Hills 90210, from Parent Trap. I mean, you've done it all. Now, how would you say the movie, how would you compare the movie and television industry from back in the late 80s, early 90s, mid-90s, up to now. Do you think it's actually became better or worse? You know, I think it's better for everybody. It's um, because 10 years ago, now, mind you, like I started acting, then I I did about 15, 20 years, and then I took a big 10-year break, and then I came back. And let Mm -hmm. me tell you, it's so different, but it's so much better. When I first started, there was no way you could audition for – you couldn't show anybody your talents and skills unless somebody called, unless you had an agent, and that agent got you an appointment, and you got to go audition. But in today's world, you can have a, uh, you can post your own material, you can have a website, you can film your own stuff. It's totally affordable now to shoot something with an iPhone. People do it all the time, <laughs> and you can shoot pictures much cheaper now, and get new, you can um, have any kind, you can just showcase yourself so much better, and there's more online opportunities for people to see you. And there was, back when I started, there was no social media. There was no Facebook. There was no uh, way to contact pe- your fans. So I couldn't contact, like, a casting director and say, hey, how are you? And I almost always do that if I can. If it's somebody that I know, I'll, touch, I'll reach out and touch base with them. And you just couldn't do that before. You had no access. You had no way of being seen unless you were on a stage in Los Angeles or New York or in a oh, sure. production. So that's got to be good for everybody. It, and it's it much is. more democratic and, and affordable these days. Yeah, You can film your own content, and you can put yourself out there. and It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that, Monica. You know, um, I think social media has actually done a pop for everyone um, in the industry. And when I say the industry, I mean in the broad industry, from movie, television, music, all over. Because like you said, you can put yourself out there and get seen and get noticed. And, you know, in today's time, it's all about how many people, it, I hate to say this, but it's all about the likes or how many fans can you actually grab. And it seems like now that some people are more focused on how many people are following you compared to your skills itself. Talent, yes, um, and that's and a new change. Mm-hmm. That's, it's interesting because now there's something, you know, there's, stars that are social media stars only they they're not they're not famous for anything else but then having a lot of people like them and follow them with making a little vine or you know it's so interesting because that's new that's all new i almost don't understand it but it, they're now a person they're now something and then they, they can build on that and take meetings based on that and that has some sort of value out there in the world <laughs> and, and so that's, that's true um, it's a good opportunity for people it's another on-ramp for more people to get involved you're 
you're definitely right. You're definitely right about that. So, guys, um, ladies and gentlemen that's listening worldwide right now, I mean, take heed to what Monica is saying because if you're trying to get into this business, if you have something simple as a Facebook account, I mean, Instagram, I mean, I think they pushed up their video to um, 30 seconds now, uh, 30 seconds or a minute, one to two. But, I mean, you can get yourself out. Yeah, you can get yourself out there and you can – Show the world what you can do, and trust me, publicists, managers, agents, people are watching. So if you're trying to get out there and you feel like it's hard, start start with your own equipment and then work your way up. Yeah, so, exactly. Yes, And you do can it. show yourself to whatever you want to show. Like say you wanted to read for a cop show, there's no, nothing stopping you from making yourself look like a cop, do a scene like a cop, send it to the people, you know, like, without being annoying. There's a, you just have a better chance. You can showcase all the different sides of you and the different looks you might have or want to do for your different skills very easily and in that way. And people do look. Everybody looks now, every time. You know, everybody's looking all the time. Mm-hmm. That is so true. That is definitely so true. Now, Monica, you're actually doing something big right now uh, with Amazon, and you're in the show that's called The Kicks. Can you tell everybody about that show? Well, The Kicks is a new Amazon original series. It's going to start streaming August 26th, and the whole first season will be up. Now, first the pilot, Amazon did the pilot. We did one pilot, and everybody wrote in and and responded with so many good comments, and that Amazon picked it up to series. So it was really great and and so, you know, gratifying to see that. And it's a family show. It's about um, it's a family show you can watch together with your kids. Your kids will like it, and I promise you, adults will like it too. It's <laughs> not your typical kid show. First of all, it's about a little girl. My, I play the mom, and the mom and dad. We have uh, two kids who move from the East Coast to the West Coast, and she's a fabulous soccer player. She wants to go to the Olympics. She's um, 14 years old, Devin, and she is really good. And of course, she comes and joins a team that's terrible, and so all these kind of things that happen. Our whole family is trying to adjust to moving to California from living in Connecticut and we're completely fish out of water and all of that and, and trying to adjust. But mom and dad have a point of view and get to be seen. It's not just one of those shows where it's all about the kids and mom and dad are just never there. <laughs> yeah. But it's very realistic too because I think like we get to be kind of interesting and funny and heartfelt and sometimes our kids have to tell us what to do. Sometimes we have to tell them what to do. It's kind of a modern take on the family, much more real. Like, I think you'll recognize your family in there more than you would an 80s sitcom because it's more more realistic about how we, you know, the way the family operates and stuff. And nice. I really like it. <laughs> hey, there you go. Um, tell everybody again the date when it's actually coming out. So September, um, I'm sorry, August 26th is when um, it will start streaming live, and anybody who has Amazon Prime will get it for free. And you can go and stream it, and you can stream it on your phone, your iPad. You can pull it up on your computer. You can airplay it up onto your big computer, I mean, big TV, whatever you want to do. And um, you'll really like it. There's also lots of, if you like sports shows or movies, like sports movies, it's got lots of great sports sequences with the soccer that will be interesting for the boys and girls and um, there's lots of pranks and things that all the teenagers mm-hmm. like, the kids pranking other kids, and it's just really cool. Um, I will nice make sure. Yeah. I was, Monica, I'm going to make sure that I do catch that show. Um, it sounds very interesting. I mean, it really does. And everybody that's listening right now, make sure you go see the show um, August 26th. If you have Amazon Prime, if you don't, spend the $99, get it. It's $99 a year. This show right here is actually makes it worth getting it by itself. So make sure you support Monica in this. Um, this show, I believe, is actually has the capability of actually really blowing up, and I have a feeling it will blow up. So, guys, make sure. And, Monica, make sure you tell all the cast and crew I said hello and congratulations ahead of time yeah. for a very successful show. So make sure you oh, let them know. You. I really appreciate that. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. Now, I Monica. everybody you... respond to it and see all that. Yeah. Yes, most definitely. Now, Monica, you've done something that I think a lot of people are having trouble doing in the acting world. How how hard was it for you to, you know, go between doing comedy and drama? I mean, how do you balance yourself to take care of both sides of the acting side of doing that? 
Well, it definitely takes a commitment because you you got to you really they're both two different things, two comedy mm -hmm. and two drama. They're are different things, and I find that um, I kept kind of gravitating to comedy stuff, and I really enjoy that. It's it's comedy is more musical. It's more um, whimsical. You push things to the nth degree. It's more silly, and I just really enjoy it. Drama is as truthful and honest and sometimes painful. It's more like holding up a mirror to your soul. So they're very different, and, and they have different um, rhythms and different things you need to know about the you know typical drama and typical comedy. But these days, they're really blending the two. And so it used to be very separate, and now, like I used to have a comedy reel and a traumatic reel. Now they're kind of blending it. Like we all see shows like Blackish, which is hysterical, but then also tugs at your heart. And you're like, that's kind of a drama in there too you know and the comedies have drama and the dramas have a little comedy so it's kind of they're starting to really be very blendable <laughs> in my mind and i love that because i think it's a good showcase for somebody like me who's not very serious i look kind of serious and together but i'm really not at all and so i like <laughs> to kind of i like playing both i would hate to be tied to just one but if i had to pick i'd pick comedy for sure because i nice. like to be outrageous silly Hey, that's a good thing. That's definitely a good thing. I believe if you do something like that and you stick to comedy, you know, I think everybody needs a little laughter in their life. And um, comedy, you know, is like a relief from the world, the real world. So I think a lot of people actually need that. So that's a good thing. I would love to see you in more comedy. I really would. Oh, thank um, you. I'm hoping to do yeah. more of that. I mean, I used to love, you know, sometimes they give the comedy parts to kind of the real character actors or the people they know about. They don't give it to the people who look kind of traditional or standard like me. But I like that because it's a surprise. You don't see it coming with somebody like me. <laughs> and that's know, what we need. I'm always, yeah, and people always go, you are so not serious, but you look so together, but you play so falling apart. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's me. You know, I like things <laughs> that don't look like what they appear. You know? I think it's more interesting. There you go, most definitely. <laughs> now, Monica, if you could pick... Any actor or actress. Let, let's do both. One actor and one actress to collaborate with in a movie or a television show. Who would it be and why? Wow. It would probably be the, the – I love Jason um, – Jason, oh, my gosh, I'm blanking on his name. Jason – Jason. Um, okay. Heavens. He's from um, – oh, my God. They um, – oh, my – what's his name? Jason um, – Oh my gosh, he was in Arrested Development, and he's in tons of movies. And he's so I know who funny. you're talking about. Kind of, you know I'm talking about. Yes, I can't think of his last name to save my life, though. No, it's Jason. Oh my gosh, it's killing me. Oh my gosh, it's killing me. I'm looking at him right now because I'm like, why can't I think of his name? Jason Bateman, for God's sakes. Jason Thanks. Bateman. He is. What I love about him is that he's funny and he can play comedy and drama. And I think he. Some of the shows he's been on, I just absolutely think are hysterical and a scream, and I just love his sense of humor. I think I would love to be partnered opposite him, like maybe playing a wife or love interest, but I'd also, um, and I guess a female person would be Kristen Wiig, because Bridesmaids and hmm. different shows like that have just been my favorite. I think she comes up with so many crazy characters, and I think it would be it would be so inspiring for me to, to do something like that. and. I think I would be, my creative juices would be flowing so majorly, and I would get so inspired. And <laughs> she, she just pushes the limit on whatever she does, and it's hilarious. But she also has kind of like a bit of a, you know, a little touching side in there, too, which I really like. Mm-hmm. So if you yeah. did that, if you did that and you did it as a comedy, could you actually control yourself through the whole show, having both of them? In oh, the okay. show, you mean, I without, mean, cry, without laughing, you mean? Yes. <laughs> or, yes. Um, it would it would probably be very hard, but I think I would love it. I think it would be a total dream. I think that would be a scream. Um, <laughs> but yeah, because I would just I would try to focus. No, it would be hard. Kristen, I have a feeling she's just laughing all day long. And that's uh, of the course best. be a lot of cutscenes. You're almost about to laugh. It's the best. Mm hmm. Well, you will be having a lot of cutscenes in that show. You really would, or yeah. movie. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes. Now, 
Um, outside, well, even with acting, acting or even outside of acting, do you have any future projects or any projects that you're working on right now that you can share with the world to let everybody know? Oh, that, that's um, great. I'm actually, I just signed on to um, do some a couple more years as the AutoNation spokesperson. And so that means I do, I'm the face of AutoNation, which is the largest auto retailer in America. And the, we shoot a whole bunch of commercials every year and do a whole bunch of different concepts, and they're really bumping it up, and so I'm really proud to be doing that because there's a lot of fun concepts coming down the pike. And um, I'd say every couple months we come out with a bunch of new ones, and then we do also do radio ads and billboards and stuff like that. But perhaps most important is AutoNation has decided as a company to give a 100% of their charitable giving and fundraising to curing cancer. And they specifically have, have, have committed to curing breast cancer. And that is a very, very uh, cause that's near and dear to my heart because my family, lots of people in my family have had breast cancer, including my mom right now who's stage four metastatic. And so okay. she's um, really struggling with it. So it's a way I can help in a big way make um, a difference by being the face of the commercials and the campaign and helping raise a lot more money than I could if it was just one person out there. So it's it's been really gratifying to do that and be a part of it. They even AutoNation even changed their corporate colors to pink because of breast cancer wow. research. And I just think that's pretty amazing. You never hear of companies, at least olden days, you never heard of them really putting charity and fundraising in the forefront of their company like that. And AutoNation really has, and they're amazing. They're really amazing. And I think they're yes. forward thinking. I think more and more companies are going to are doing that. As our as young people come up, they're like, hey, I could put my money anywhere. I want to put it with a company I believe in that's like Tom's, you know, and they, they raise money. And there's so many companies now that do that. And I just think that's the new modern way, and I think it's smart. And I'm so much happier to support AutoNation because of it. And so I'm nice. excited for the fun stuff we come up with yes. next year. Big shout out to Automation. Big shout out to all the companies that's actually raising money for breast cancer because that is a serious business, guys. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that's listening around the world. I mean, spare. I mean, if you can put money towards the a company or donate towards cancer in any type of way, breast cancer, any type of cancer. I don't care if it's a penny, a dollar. Five dollars, a hundred dollars. It doesn't matter. Just put what you can because we all have to fight this, and we have to make sure that we win on this side, guys. Uh, Monica, also, your mother will be in my prayers. Um, I believe she will fight this and she will win the battle. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's, yes. it's, it's something that everybody has a cancer story. It's pretty shocking. Everybody knows somebody. It touches us all, and we do have the ability, like you said. If everybody comes to, comes together, and there's so many creative ways to do that, you know, in AutoNation, if you go, if you, any car or truck that you buy, they put a pink plate around um, your license plate, and and you can show your support that way. If you want to go drop by and just make a donation of any amount, we'll give you a pink plate, and you can put that on your around your drive, uh, around your license plate and show your support, which I love that they do that as well. So that's it's just one way to kind of show support and build up all the people out there who are fighting it right now. A lot of people. You're so right. Yes, you're so right. Everybody, after this show, go and give. I don't care. Like I said, once again, I will repeat myself go and give. It doesn't matter if it's a penny, a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. Just give because we have to come together and we have to fight this. And I'm guarantee if we can put all our funds together and our support together, something can happen and we will make a difference. So, yes. So everybody, go help Monica out on this. Now, mm -hmm. I, I appreciate that. Yes. Now, um, Monica, how can your fans find you on social media? Well, I have a. I'm on Facebook, Monica Lacey, and I am on Instagram. That's probably my favorite mode. It's at Mon Lacey at M O N L A C Y, and I also am on Twitter at at Mon Lacey at M O N L A C Y. And, that's, and I also have a website, monicalacy.com. And so I'm going to be updating that soon because I've got new fun behind the scenes photos and pictures from the set and doing some fun stuff with the cast behind the scenes. And we're about to do a whole bunch of press. So there's going to be fun things. Oh, and Alex Morgan, did I mention this? Alex Morgan no. is the star of the women's soccer team. Do you know her? She yes. is the USA women's national soccer team. She's going mm -hmm. to be killing it during the Olympics. She is the one who wrote the series of books called The Kicks 
that the show is based on. So she wow. supports it, and it's kind of exciting to follow her at the Olympics and then watch kind of inspired by story of her growing up. Um, and that's kind of what the show is about. So it's exciting. I'm really excited to watch the Olympics with my family and all everybody I know. Of course. Sure everybody is, too. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm going to actually be definitely staying tuned to the Olympics. Um, that's one of my favorite things to watch, you know, especially during the summer. This is – it's just okay, showing like everybody – I you know, mm-hmm. love the human interest story, like how when they tell the stories about everybody who's, you know, coming out and how, how they got to where they are – pretty inspiring it makes me want to go do something with my life and i have to say it's so great to see the women's usa national the the national soccer team of the women they're number one in the world the world that's amazing and they've been the number one in the world for a couple of years going they're amazing i just can't believe the level of play i played soccer and didn't look anything like that when i was a kid (laughs) but it's kind of (laughs) fun and i there's so many fans out there men and women because, you know, I think the men are rated, I mean, not quite as high. I think they might be, like, in the 30s. But still, it's amazing to see these athletes, how far they go and how good they get. It's amazing. Do you think it's because of the coach? You know, the difference, like, the ranking? You know, like how um, teams? Yeah, and I think that sometimes there's just a magic, you know, group of people that do so well, like, together. And it's just that time. Like, that's why, like, the Lakers, when they hit their stride, or the certain teams, they're, it's just the magic of everybody together contributing. Um, and I think with um, soccer, is just hitting its stride in America. It's been huge in other countries. But I think girls especially have just caught on. And, and every girl I know has played soccer or is about to play soccer or their kids play soccer. Like, it's just something. Mm-hmm. It's like a part of life now. And so many people play. And so and it's easy to play. It's easy to participate. And I think – they'll get so much more out of watching the Olympics because they you know what they're watching. It's hard and what they're, you know, how accurate these people are. And I do think that um, coaching makes a huge difference, but I think if you want to be good and you can go out there and, and, and really if sports is somewhere where usually hard work pays off. You know, hopefully a hard workers meet the good coaches and then it's true magic. So true. Oh. So true. Now, um, Monica also what is your ultimate goal as an actress? You know, you know who my, my idol is? It's Julia Louis-Dreyfus. She went from Seinfeld to the old Adventures of New Christine, and now she's yep. on, like, the hottest show that I think is probably the best ever. It's called Veep. She's been on three amazing shows. Like, that would be a dream to be working with each, like, to be able to be on, I'm on the kicks. So I'd love to be on another show one day. Like, if I could keep doing this for 20 more years, 30 more years, I would be so blessed and so lucky. I just dream about that. Like, I, I just want to keep working, keep on working, keep, being, keep learning something, and keep working. Because it's, it's the only thing that really scares me to death, and yet is the most exciting thing I do every day. So it's, I just know that I wouldn't be satisfied with anything else. <laughs> Sadly, but go. truly. Yes. And, I mean, your resume, Monica, already speaks for itself. And, I mean, from, I mean, like I told everybody before, you can go all the way back to the days of 90210, Parent Trap. I mean, you're you're still working. Even if you took a hiatus off, you came back in and you're still kicking like you never miss, uh, missed a beat. So now you got the kicks. I mean, trust me, you say in 20 or 30 more years. Yeah. You said 20 or 30 more years. I think that's going to be very easy for you to uh, sustain right there. So that's not a problem for you. So, uh, well, yes. Thank you. I hope so. And I keep seeing more and more roles. I'm like, yay, now I can do different roles. Like you, as you get older, you leave the you know, young adults, then you're like in the mom category. And then hopefully I can do more you know, different kind of crazy characters. Today I went in for a mentally ill character. Super interesting, hard, fascinating, challenging. I believe it. You, you know, but that's so there's always rich characters out there. And as you stick around, you can you slowly have a chance. You, you know, everybody sticks it out, but keeps getting a chance. You know, you'll eventually oh, yeah. get your turn at the ring. Of course. Of course. And ladies and gentlemen, that's listening out there, make sure if you're an actor or actress that's actually just starting in the industry, 
there's no easy road. You have to come out there and you have to show every time that you step on stage, step in front of a camera, step anywhere, and you have to show your A game every time, guys. So if you're doing that right now, continue to do it. Congratulations to the people that are making it big. Congratulations to Monica that's making it big. She's doing big things. So continue to do what you do, Monica. I'm very proud of you. Oh, thank you, Coop. That's really sweet. Thank you so thank much. You. Yes. And I'm not gonna hold and I'm not gonna hold you long. I know you're a busy woman. Um one last question. What advice would you give any male or female that wants to become an actor or actress? I would say act every day. That means film yourself, put stuff on tape, do, do, perform, perform pieces that you write, perform pieces your friend writes, perform plays that are famous. Get on stage wherever you are in any city. You can always be in a play, and it can get videotaped, and then you've got a piece of tape. And you keep, on, keep your ear to the ground, look at what projects are coming up, and if there's one that you're right for, email the casting or the producer, the director, Figure out a way to get in front of them, and if you've got if you've been working on your craft, then you'll be ready to blow them away. It is because there's room for everybody in this business. Truly, your part will be there. I, I don't believe in this nonsense that only a couple people could make it. There's room for everybody, uh, and your time will come. You you got to work on it every day. Read the books, watch the inspiring things, but most importantly, do it as often as you can, as much as you can. Nice. Guys, you heard it here first on the Bit Scoop with Coop, Monica Lacey on the show. Congratulations once again for the kicks. Congratulations for the shows you've done back in the 80s, the 90s, all the way up to now. You have a big career ahead of you, Monica. You continue to do what you do. Uh, Monica, I would love to have you back on the show in the future. I would love to, and I, I love Scoop with Coop, and I love the show, and I'm going to be watching and Keep on listening and keep an eye on your career because you're a rising star, too. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much for the chance to talk to you. Thank you. And you have a great day, Monica. Thank you. Until next time. All right. Until next time, everybody, on the Bit Scoop with Coop. Bye, everybody.